Well, good day everybody. It's that time of the week again. It's story time and this week I have got three of my boys in here. I have got Vic on the end here. He is the Max Kip and I've got my newest baby, little Harry. He is the Mick Kip and on the end here we've got Brick and he is the Adam Kip. I know them all. <laughs> and this week I changed it up a bit. Um, I didn't do the next in line because the next in line was kind of a girly story. So I'll leave that till next week. So this week I'm doing another one and it is Jack and the Beanstalk. <gasps> Jack and the, we all know who Jack and the Bean Jack was. So I oh, forgot and got Garthwood up the back there like he's having a rest, having some tummy time. And as always, my little yeah, angel. Happiness Angel. So we've got Jack and the Beanstalk. Once upon a time, there was a young boy called Jack who lived with his mother in a cottage. They were so poor that bit by bit, they had to sell everything they owned just to buy their food. Then one day, Jack's mother said to him, said to him We'll have to sell Bluebell, our old cow. Take her to the market, Jack, and remember to sell her for a good price. So Jack took Bluebell off to the market. He had just reached the edge of town when an old man appeared at the side of the road. Are you going to sell that fine cow? said the man. Yes, said Jack. Well, I'll buy her from you. And I will give you these magic beans, said the man holding out a handful of dry beans. I know they don't look much, but if you plant them, you'll be rich beyond your wildest dreams. Jack liked the idea of being rich. It's a deal, he said, shaking the stranger's hand at once. He gave Bluebell to the man and took the be beans. Wouldn't his mother be pleased? We'll wait and see, won't we? When Jack showed his mother the beans, she was so angry that her face turned as red as a beetroot. Oh, that must have been red. You stupid boy, go to your room, she cried and threw the beans out the window. Jack sat on his bed feeling miserable. Stupid beans, he muttered. Stupid me. Then he fell asleep. When Jack woke up the next morning, it was strangely dark in his room and all he could see through the window were leaves of a huge plant. A plant so tall that he couldn't see the top of it. Oh, this is very interesting. It's a beanstalk, cried Jack. What's at the top? Jack started to climb. Up he went, from branch to branch and from leaf to leaf. At the top was a giant house. Jack's tummy was rumbling with hunger, so he knocked on the big door. A giant woman answered, Please, madam, may I have some breakfast? Jack asked politely. You'll become breakfast if my husband finds you, said the giant's wife. Jack begged and pleaded, and at last she let him in and gave him some bread and milk. The giant's wife had just shown Jack where to hide when the giant came home in a bad mood. Fee, fi, fo, fum. I smell the blood of an Englishman, he roared. It's just sausages I had cooked for you, laughed his wife. The giant ate a giant-sized breakfast and sat down to count the huge gold coins in his treasure chest. One hundred and one, one hundred and two, he counted. But his head started to nod before long he was fast asleep. Quick as a flash, Jack grabbed one of the huge coins. 
He raced to the beanstalk and climbed down it as fast as his leg could carry him. His mother was so happy to see the gold and she hugged Jack for 10 whole minutes. We'll never be poor again, she laughed. Before long, however, Jack and his mother had spent all the money. So the boy decided to climb the beanstalk again. As before, Jack knocked on the door and asked the giant's wife for some food. She gave him some bread and milk and hid him in the cupboard just as the giant arrived home. When the giant had eaten a giant-sized lunch, his wife brought him the golden goose. Lay, he said, and the goose laid a solid gold egg. It had laid 10 eggs before the giant started to snore. Jack could hardly believe his luck. Quick as a flash, he picked up the goose and ran. Although Jack and his mother were now rich beyond their wildest dreams, Jack decided to climb the beanstalk one more time. This time, Jack sneaked in when the giant's wife wasn't looking and quickly hid in the cupboard. The giant came home as usual and ate a giant-sized dinner. Then his wife brought him his magic harp. Play, he roared, and the harp began to play. It was such sweet music that the giant fell asleep in record time. Jack grabbed the harp and started to run, but the giant woke up at once and chased after him. The boy slithered down the beanstalk farther, faster than he had ever done before. Mother, quick, fetch me the axe, Jack yelled as he reached the ground. He chopped at the beanstalk with all his might. Creak, groan. The giant quickly climbed back up to the top just before the beanstalk crashed to the ground. Jack never saw the giant again. Him, his mother, and the golden goose live happily ever after. Oh, isn't that nice? Isn't that a nice story? Well, not really, because that little boy, he stole those items. And still, we all know, is not nice. So, that may be the moral of the story. But in the end... Jack and his mother got rid of the giant and they lived happily ever after and the giant could not get to them because they chopped down the beanstalk. Now, oh, excuse me, I hope you've enjoyed my little story. This is Harry's first story time and he's dozed off. Oh, I've got the burps. That is so good. He is such a cute boy. As you know, th these boys, all these will be in my video for Sunday chat tomorrow. And we will see you then. So I hope you are having a good time wherever you are in this beautiful world. And we will see you in our next video, which will be, what will that be? Sunday chat. So everybody, thank you. I'll see you then. I've got some things to talk about. So we will see you tomorrow. So everybody have a good time. Take one day at a time. And we will see you tomorrow. So Rick says goodbye. Oh, Harry's asleep. Lee, Vic will say goodbye. And Garfield up the back having a rest. Aren't you little man? And little sunshine angel. There. So we'll see you tomorrow. Bye.